Okay, my watch says 10 o'clock, so I'm going to get going. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's NCFE Provider CPD webinar on planning linear T-level delivery. Can I quickly do a, a, another sound check? Please let me know that you can hear me okay by putting something in the text box in the chat box that can be found in the bottom of the control panel on your right of your screen it's set up to allow everyone to see everybody's comments so please be aware of this thanks tracy uh, if you prefer a question or comment to be private you'll need to change the setting accordingly as collaboration with colleagues and networking with other centre staff normally offers the best opportunities for learning in face-to-face -face sessions we'd like to utilize every chance to do this virtually today Therefore, when you have experiences to share, please do so. Activities completed during the session should also allow for this. In relation to questions, I'd like to assure you that no question is a silly question. And if you're not sure about something, there's a strong possibility that others may not be sure either. So I'd like to take this opportunity to encourage questions from everybody. If they are not answered during today's session, we'll ensure that we'll take them away and find an answer for everyone after the session. So welcome, my name's Helen Scanlon. I'm Curriculum Officer for T-Levels at NCFE. I have over 25 years of teaching experience and I've worked in the compulsory sector, the private sector, the charitable trust and adult learning contexts and with SEN learners. I've experienced teaching and assessing in FE and HE I've got a vocational learning background and I'm also a maths and English specialist. I've included a picture here, so you can put a face to the voice if you haven't already met me yet. You'll see that my contact details are also on the screen. My role at NCFE is to support centres through the planning, onboarding and CPD process for NCFE and cash qualifications, with a focus on pr promoting and advancing learning. Today's session is related specifically to planning a T-level curriculum with a focus on the education and childcare route. I'm also joined today by Janet King, one of our T-level sector managers and the subject specialist for education and childcare. Janet's gonna be helping with the breakout activities and should be able to answer any subject specific questions which are asked. Hello, Janet, and thanks for joining us today. Hi Helen, thank you and good morning everybody. Looking forward to the session. Um, I, I know from previous sessions that this is going to give you a lot of information that you need and more than that the opportunity for the breakout sessions is really useful to be able to, to really explore what, what, uh, what might be on your mind and, and do so in smaller groups and in an interactive way. So really looking forward to it. Thanks Helen. Lovely, thank you Janet. Brilliant. So I'm going to move on to the purpose of today's session and in true teaching style, I've got my objectives. We're going to explore the important factors when planning T-level programmes, evaluate the planning of programmes in relation to student needs, identify the important milestones in the T-level education, childcare, and analyse how to plan, input and guide learning activities effectively. So we've got quite a bit to do. The outline agenda, uh, the session's one hour in duration and will include a range of activities with tasks, self-reflection activities and collaborative work with other participants. Feedback from our centres has included requests for more interaction and more interactive activities. And although this might be a challenge when we're not working face to face, the structure of today's session is based on participants completing activities, sharing ideas and working together. The interactive and collaborative approach is why we've limited the numbers for these CPD sessions. And although, although the session is being recorded, when we go into smaller breakout rooms, GoToTrainer will not record the breakout room activity. I therefore to ask you to remember the nuggets which come to light during the breakout activities, and then we'll share them when we come back together as a whole group. And that way we can record what happened in the breakout rooms. In the large group activities, I ask for communication, including your ideas and questions, to be provided through the chat box. So just to summarise, the, se the session is being recorded and a link will be made available after the session. Questions not addressed in the webinar will be rolled up into a question and answer document and will be circulated afterwards. All sound settings are on mute to avoid as much background noise and feedback as we can. An evaluation will be deployed on completion of the webinar and I'm going to take this opportunity to encourage you to complete a very short survey to help us improve and develop our CPD offer. Feedback polls will also be, polls will also be used during the session to gauge opinions, views, experiences, etc. 
If you haven't already done so, can you let me know that you can hear me okay um, through the chat box? As NCFE are the providers of technical qualification for education and childcare, we're going to focus on that in today's session. I'm going to refer to the technical qualification as the TQ from this point forward. Lovely, thanks Louise and Lorraine, brilliant. So you will have received the participant handbook and you might have heard me talking about it already. If you've had a look at it, great. If you'll see that it's been designed to be used alongside today's session activities. It's completion that isn't mandatory, but it might be useful to refer back to after the session if you record ideas or any interesting points which are raised or made as we move through the session. Please use it in the way that works best for yourself. If you don't know where it is or you haven't seen it yet, by the way, it's in the materials section of the chat, uh, control panel on the right. But to get started, I'm going to start off with a, a poll. I'm going to ask everyone to respond to the first poll question, which is, where are you currently at with your T-level curriculum planning? I'm just going to go to the polls and launch it now. You'll see a range of answers to choose from. Um, have you yet to start? Have you started but not got much done yet? Have you started and maybe think you're nearly there and you th or do you think you're just about ready to go? If you could choose the most appropriate answer for that, that would be wonderful. I'll just give you a minute or two to do that. Lovely, thank you to the people who are voting. This is excellent. And as all professionals, it looks like you've all got started in some shape or form. Um, I was going to say, unless you do, didn't know you were going to be teaching T-levels starting in September, um, I would expect some some starting to, to have, some planning would have started already. Excellent. I'll just give another, another couple of seconds for people to vote if you haven't already. And just let us know where you're at so that we can hopefully tailor this session a little bit more for your current position. Lovely, I'm going to close the poll now. Thank you for that. I'm just going to share the results. So as you can see, most people um, have started. Um, some people are nearly ready to go. So I'd really like to, to share your experiences so far, your ideas and opinions. Um, the last time around this session, people were very interested to uh, hear what other people had said. Okay, let's get started then. And I'll start off by asking everyone to talk about, well, sorry, I'm going to talk about the documents that were made available um, during the session. We've got the qualification specifications, which are normally an excellent place to start with any planning. The assessment key date schedule and some of the sample schemes of work already produced by NCFE's Learning Technology and Resources team. These were sent or made available when you registered and when you logged in today. You may also find it useful to refer to your, exist your ex own existing planning documents, either for your previous vocational learning or your current T-level planning documents. I've also shared some mapping documents which you might also find useful. So the documents that are here are also available on Qualhub and the centres you know, have access to those too. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions um, and these relate to the purpose of today's session to clarify the meaning of the term and explore the rationale for today's session title. You'll also find these questions on page three if you've got the participant handbook to, to hand. To get things started, we're going to evaluate how using a linear approach within the T-level planning would be beneficial to both yourselves as teaching staff and as students. I'm going to give you a minute to consider the questions, make a note of your thoughts or ideas, either in the handbook or elsewhere, if you're going to find that useful. To support and guide your thinking, I'm also going to move on to a second poll and provide some examples. So the next poll and, and final poll is about the meaning of linear planning. What do we mean by linear planning and delivery for the T-level curriculum? 
I'm going to launch a second poll now with some possible answers. Is linear planning planning for long-term skills and knowledge development? Is it planning with summative assessments in mind? Is it planning to regularly revisit previous learning throughout your programme? Is it not focusing on modules or not focus on a modular approach? Um, or is it all of the above? If you could please choose the most appropriate answer there that you feel explains the meaning of linear planning. Excellent, thank you to those who have already voted. Um, obviously we'll leave it open a bit longer. Just choose the one that you think is most appropriate, it would be wonderful. I'll just give it a couple more seconds. If you haven't already had the opportunity to do so, please choose an answer. Okay, I'm going to close that poll now and I'm going to share the results again. So as you can see, the majority of people said all of the above. There wasn't a wrong answer there. All the answers are correct. Um, they are as you have rightly identified, um, all correct, linear planning considers long-term skills and knowledge development. It will have summative assessments in mind with regular revisiting of previous learning. Although there are separate and distinct modules in the TQ, they are cross-referenced and assessed together at the end of each academic year. We should therefore try not to focus too much on a modular approach to teaching and learning and plan learning in a way which supports long-term retention. As the summative assessment generally takes place at the end of years one and two, what is taught at the beginning of the programme will need to be retained by the students all the way to the end. So linear planning must take that into consideration. So moving on from the question, we're going to start exploring some answers. A useful starting point would be to use the basic components of the, the T-level. This image shows the assistant teaching pathway. On the left, you can see the different components and along the top, there are the important dates for the TQ over the two-year programme. Looking closer, the core content delivery th runs throughout the two years and we can see that the exams and employer set project dates are at the end of each academic year. There is the industry, place, industry placement run throughout the programme. You can also see the dates for the occupational specialisms and related assignments. Linear planning takes into consideration all of this and the important questions planners would need to ask themselves would be, what content is covered in the two exams? When is it taught and how will it be retained if we start teaching at the beginning of the year and it's assessed at the end of the year? How can we make the most of the industry placement? Will it be in blocks or will it run throughout the year? What do the students need to be taught before they start their placement? How can the learning and placements best work together? For the occupational specialist input, what fits in best and where? Where are the commonalities and where are the mapping opportunities? How to plan in contingency for resets around the assessment dates and results publications? And very importantly, where do the English maths and digital skills matter and how could they be taught and supported? Those questions are detailed and complicated, but can be a good starting point. Moving on from the questions, let's explore on the answers. A useful starting point is to consider your existing provision. You'll find the next three questions on page three of the participant handbook, and you've probably already considered, because you've started planning, how your current provision and how you could use it to help with your T-level planning. They will have similar components. Education and childcare haven't changed just because of the introduction of T-levels. There will always be new theories and research findings. Teachers keep up to date with these already. So I think you should feel quite confident that much of the TQ call spec will, will be familiar. Janet, what are your thoughts here, please? 
Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Helen. I think one of the greatest changes for, for us all to get our heads around is looking at that linear approach and the approach to assessment in particular. So where we might have had almost that reassurance um, that we are contributing to the overall outcome of the, of the student's qualification through that modular approach, the, the shift now to that linear approach and that synoptic assessment is, is, is different and will feel different, but the content of delivery, um, you know, your, your, the students in education and childcare are the same as they ever were. You, you know what they look and feel like and, and you know how, um, you know, how to, how to support them through expert content and delivery and that'll be as it ever was. The, the breadth, um, as Helen was saying, the, the, the breadth of the T level um, is familiar. There may be new elements to that and, and, and the way that things are structured might be slightly different with, it, with the inclusion of a wider scope of, of theoretical concepts. But the core of um, of the qualification will be familiar um, and, and you know you should take some reassurance from that and, and build your confidence from that if you look at the the headings and, and the way that those 12 elements are structured they are familiar they they have got an anchor to what you're already teaching in a vocational qualification if you are doing so um, so you've got the breadth across the 12 elements of the core and you have got the um, the depth um, within the performance outcomes and you'll see that there is plenty of opportunity for overlap and contextualization if you're teaching in a discrete way i.e. you're teaching an early years group or you're teaching a supporting and uh, teaching and learning group so there's plenty of opportunity to do that as well and um, so the greatest the greatest change will be in the way that the assessment is um, is structured and arranged but the greatest familiarity, the greatest strength is the fact that you've, you know, if you've been teaching education and childcare um, previously, take confidence from that. Those students are the same students as they ever were. Thanks, Helen. Lovely. Thanks a lot, Janet. Um, some really good advice and guidance there. I'm going to move into some possible answers for these questions just to share what our thoughts were. Um, the core knowledge and understanding of the context, concepts, theories and principles are going to be similar, as is uh, the specialist knowledge, skills and behaviours, competencies and how they might be simil similar as well over the two different pathways. The English maths, digital skills needed for the vocational area, the industry and the level of study uh, and what the skills of the students have in relation to the needs of the role. Placements and work tasters and employability skills, and again, what skills the students have and need to be successful in the industry. And also the wider skills and competencies, including the ability to apply and evaluate their own professional practice, all extremely important in the education and childcare TQ. Okay, moving on to activity two. Now we have an overview of the components of the T-level programme and how they relate to existing provision. We can move on to what we should consider in our planning. If you've already considered this and or made some notes on the top of page four in the participant handbook, um, please, if you can, share them in the chat box as I run through some of these examples. So for the first bullet point, the student support needs, the work readiness, the English, maths and digital skill levels, the wider skills, competencies, communication, social and work skills. For the second one, the need of the subject, what new content is there, what legislation has changed and what available resources are already out there for us to use. The classroom teaching and learning, considering where we could where we currently are with restrictions, et cetera, and how our organisations are managing learning moving forward. For example, less classroom based. So we possibly can't rely on the approach that is normally used in the classroom, for example, discussions, presentations and group work. Therefore, we may need to adapt to a more blended approach and have more self access and individual work activities to support learning and development. Thankfully, and being positive, this might help with the stickability of the learning if we can promote metacognition from the start and promote independent learning and less reliance on teachers. For assessment, having the dates in mind is important, but it's probably more important for teachers to have a good understanding of where criteria crosses over to maximise all possible learning opportunities. 
also a vocational programme having an exam based strategy um, will have be different approach to us but how will that meet the needs of students and how will we adapt to meet those needs revision and exam preparation sessions are not new to us as teachers but students may need us to develop a different set of skills and strategies in our teaching and learn approaches to support their development the industry placements we know are going to be a challenge there's probably no doubt there but if we get ahead and plan for this effectively in relation to skills and knowledge development they could be a vital and successful part of the t-level program Lastly, are there any other qualifications or training relevant to the T-level programme? For example, professional recognition. And Janet, can I bring your expertise in again here, please? Yeah, absolutely. So where students are looking at the um, early years educator criteria, so they're taking an early years education and care specialism, um, then, it, you know, it's important to be mindful of that. Perhaps earlier on, I know that, you know, it, the way that the T-level is structured, you think of the core and then you think of the two pathways. Really important to have an idea of, of, of what specialism your students are going to focus in on and that's especially relevant with the early years educator more more than any of the T level to be honest because of that professional aspect to it and, and the need to meet the early years educator criteria um, and what we can do is reassure you that this that the early that the T level with the focus on the early years um, pathway occupational specialism will be listed as full and relevant on, on the DFE list so it, it will enable Enable students to progress um, into an early years um, employment opportunity within the workforce or indeed to go on to higher education but just important to note that it has got that um, rubber stamp thanks Helen lovely thanks a lot Janet so okay what bringing in the detail of the TQ this next slide will provide an overview of the guided learning hours this is taken directly from the qual spec and is a document which curriculum planners can use to to guide them However, what's most important and how this is how this relates to the actual students that are going to be on your T-level programmes. Best practice tells us that all planning should be guided by the students on the course, their starting points, development and support needs and individual circumstances. That's nothing new. So we'll now move on to the last question on page four of the participant handbook. Activity three, we'll call this the student journey, the mountain here being the T-level. If the student starts at point A, how do they get to point B? Is it a straightforward climb to the top or is it a varied and diverse climb? Another consideration is the student's starting points. Is everybody starting at A? How can we find out where every student is starting and track their progress up the mountain? Ofsted are very interested in this, identifying where each student's starting point is, recording it and using this information to plan the most effective learning journey for each student and importantly, tracking their progress up the mountain. When might or will they need some extra climbing equipment? When can their journey be expanded upon or improved further? And where and when are the opportunities for stretch and challenge? Experience shows that students will start at very different points and this will be the case for all of the components of the TQ. So they will make very different individual journeys. It is important for me to stress here though that I'm not suggesting we need a number of di different curriculum plans, but a core plan which can be adapted, responsive to our students' needs and the challenges we're bound to face throughout the programme. The one size fits all approach to planning may not take these factors into consideration and best practice would be to plan the curriculum in a way which meets the needs of the students, but also meets the requirements of the qualification. However, this will be a challenge to meet at the start of the programme. So we should remember that having a plan at the start is good, but we should be happy to change and adapt that plan when or when needed. So the important points here would be the importance of initial assessment and induction, using the induction period extremely wisely, developing the students' awareness of their own development needs and starting points, um, and also considering what the students' motivation and engagement levels are. So moving on to activity four, let's have a look at what we could base our plans on. What we already know is that there are four core skills. These can be seen on page five of the participant handbook. 
the general English maths and digital competencies, which are mapped on the table shown in the handbook as well, along with the occupational specialisms and the placement and assessment preparation. These can form the basis of a linear plan but, and will be very useful, but what about the unknowns? There are a number of things we don't know, including the students' starting points and support needs, the placement detail, where, when and how, might not be clarified and confirmed yet. Will it be in block, stay, release, and when will it start and how will it start? How classroom teaching is going to work in the next academic year. There's going to be probably much less contact with students and it might be a stage tendance and more online learning. Exactly how the summative assessments are going to work. Sample materials are useful and more will be coming. And obviously there's what we don't know and can't predict. Another lockdown, for example. For student needs, initial assessment and the induction period, as I said, is going to be absolutely vital. And our next CPC session in September focuses on this area. So we're now going to go into the breakout rooms. For the next 10 to 15 minutes or so, we're going to go break out into two breakout rooms and work in smaller groups and share planning ideas and experiences. For information, the breakout rooms won't be recorded, so feel free to fully contribute without the, the, the fear of the recording. The facilitators for each room and hopefully yourselves will collect experiences and ideas and provide feedback when we come back to the large room. What we'd like you to do is talk about where you're at with your planning, what lessons you've learned already, what decisions you've made with some explanation and analysis of, as of why to share, which is the networking work that I was um, talking about earlier. We've got a couple of schemes of work available for you to look at already. They're in the materials section. We've got core and occupational specialism schemes of work there. We've got mapping documents, the qual spec, the key date schedule. And if you've brought anything else at all with you, um, please refer to that. And if you've made any notes in your participant handbook already, please refer to those. It'll take me a minute or two to sort out the breakout room activity. So please bear with us and we'll chat in the breakout room shortly. I'll be facilitating one of them and Janet will be facilitating the second. So just bear with me for a second to sort out the rooms. Make sure that we're sharing the best information. Oh, do you have an assessor as well? Then that actually, because I think our assessors are maybe going to step step in to help with the group that's supposed to be in placement and do some um, stuff with them. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, my current assessor has just left. That was very helpful this week. Um, so we've got hopefully somebody oh, new. Yeah. 
after half term. Um, so the idea is that they will, for example, if they've got four days, they will then split their two days over the course of the week with each group in some capacity, supporting with um, practical skills and even yeah. doing discussions and sort of developing those skills that they're going to need for placement and certainly the preparation for placement as well. So they would ultimately take responsibility for that. Yeah, oh, that's good because that, that's where we've got two assessors with ours and they're working together to build up a programme to support the learners that can't get into placement. Yeah, um, yeah. In so okay, everybody, we're back together in the really large good. group. Okay, thank you, Helen. Hello, we're all back together. I hope that's okay. Um, Janet, do you want to give your feedback first? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we had a really good discussion. So thank you to um, the the people that, that were in the in Group A. I think we were. Um, so thank you for your contributions. Um, we the, the initial discussion was around the resources, and we talked about the schemes of work and how right. the schemes of work are developed in themes. Um, and the the qualification itself is in elements, and and it that had an initial confusion in terms of how perhaps the the themes have been put together, and and yet you've got the sort of element structure within the qualification. So, um, if anybody else had been thinking about that, or if that had confused anybody else, the reasoning behind that is that um, the schemes of work are obviously um, non-mandatory. You can you can deliver it as as you wish, but we weren't able to put the units or the elements into those themes because the specification had been um, sort of um, overseen by by the institute so it was our attempt at, at putting the, those elements into a thematic approach but it was good feedback and useful to know um, you know and apologies for any confusion there so I can speak to our learning team resources and um, to perhaps get something in writing to help with that um, so that was the first thing. And then we talked about um, issues that might be of greater significance. So we talked about exams um, and there were some wonderful um, approaches to how the the, um, the, college, the schools and colleges will be preparing students and we talked about um, assessments for exam preparation so incorporating assessments into the teaching and learning and using a variety of different types of assessments as well including controlled um, approaches to prepare students for exams um, our sort of and, and there was a, there was good discussions around that our final um, discussion was around placement and the, the 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 obvious challenges that are going on there with the placement and the programs for for that and again and which is um, made worse by by the local lockdowns in certain regions as well um, some fantastic innovative ideas that are making maximizing the use of the assessors and practical workshops guest speakers coming in where students can't get in lots of practical work going on um, and uh, i also mentioned the placement program that that uh, NCFE Cash have developed, and I'll send you a link to that, Helen, at the end, so that you can circulate that around. Brilliant, that, thank that you. Was, yeah. It was a really good, really good conversation. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you, Janet, and thank you, Group A. Group B, exactly the same. So, some really good points made. Different people using the schemes of work as a basis. Some people are using the modular approach. Some people are adapting it, um, which is totally what what should be happening. Um, using some of the themes and not using some of the themes, running theme one and theme two alongside each other makes a lot of sense. Um, looking at running with themes but using an online platform more um, and one organisation has created a student scheme of learning based on the themes, kind of flipping the uh, the learning so that they do more reading before sessions and after sessions uh, so some really good ideas what we'll do janet and i will um collate all these ideas and pull something together to to share with everybody and i just wanted to quickly say pauline asked about the the textbook um, my understanding that the textbook is um, going to be available in the spring um, and obviously that we want it now, we don't want to, to wait another day really. But I know that NCFA are working with Hodder to come up with some more short term solutions to, to sort of fill a bit of a gap while we wait for the um the 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 course textbook to, to be ready. So watch this space, but also ask your account executives because I got that from one of the account execs yesterday that there is work going on 
between now, well, from, from now, um, ask and sent us to work with with Hodder and with us to um, to come up with thing, so, um, things to come up with some um, resources <laughs> that will plug the gap a bit while we wait for the textbook to come. Janet, have you heard anything about that that work that uh, I've been told about or not? Well, you're absolutely right in terms of the textbook. So uh, spring 2021 is when the textbook is, is due. But I know that Hodder have also done some mapping work. So they've mapped, <coughs> sorry, excuse, <coughs> excuse me. And they've done some mapping work between the core elements and the performance uh, outcomes and the current existing textbooks to be able to signpost to, to, to this. So that's something that hopefully will be made available as well but as I, as I say it's a case of using textbooks as resources rather than okay so they're not going to follow the course material as such they'll be used as textbooks uh, in general for, for subject um, knowledge but the content and the depth will be there. Mm -hmm. Brilliant and I mean if nothing else they'll be there in, in hopefully plenty of time for the, the assessments that take place um, next May and June, so there might be a, a, a good um, resource to build revision um, activities around. Okay, we've only got about 10 minutes left, so we'll, we'll move swiftly on because I do want to have a little bit of time left at the end for questions if need be. So we've, um, some of the centres have already been talking about flipping the classroom and one thing I did notice when I looked at the schemes of work that we've got, this is a, an extract from Scheme of Work um, from theme three, is that there is a lot of um, classroom activities which teachers may not be able to, to fully utilise in the classroom moving forward because these were produced uh, pre-COVID. Um, activity six can be found on the top of page nine in the participant handbook if you're following it. it. Relates to the core scheme of work for theme three. This is one of the resources you may have looked at already. I'm sure you have. And what I've done is tried to adapt uh, tried to identify adaptations which may work better moving forward with the requirements of teaching and learning with the new restrictions in mind. So for example for this one, one useful approach would be to identify the opportunities for pre-session and homework tasks linked to previous or future input just as as I say one of the centres was talking about in our breakout room. This would promote student autonomy with structured reflection tasks using an online platform for students to maybe present their research findings to their teacher and the peers virtually um, instead of in the classroom. In the next example, students could be asked to reflect on the stages of, of cognition and significant, significant milestones in learning by being set specific questions to answer individually and then bring their answers and ideas to a virtual classroom with their peers and their teacher. Alternatively, case studies could be used um, to provide it, uh, to, uh, something to base important relevant stages and milestones on or even a jigsaw type activity and um, this would ask students to research a particular stage or milestone and then they present their findings to their peers for a guided discussion with their tutor. The added benefit of this type of activity is that it's easy to differentiate as teachers can set the level of the task and how much support or guidance is provided to individuals. The ideas on this slide are alternatives to the small group work suggested in the resource. Being creative with the activities and developing the students' reflective thinking and analytical skills will support the development of skills, knowledge and competencies for all of the T-level. An example of this is shown in the student production of a resource, which they then peer review. I think that was one thing people mentioned earlier in the in the feedback there was you could, students could um, do an activity and then peer review each other's activities. If this is structured in a way that allows them to develop their evaluative skills in supportive and collaborative way, there's many benefits for all. They could also be involved in producing, re, producing re, review and revision tasks throughout the year. I've seen this done with level one students very effectively, where the students write the questions and the answers for their teachers and peers to answer in the vocational subject. This could be planned in throughout the year and fit in with the linear planning requirements of the programme or even the different themes. I've also seen childcare students prov providing fact sheets for leaf and, and, or leaflets for peer review. So it might be a fact sheet um, targeted at a, a parent or at a child or at one of their peers who you've got your yeah, more experience. Uh, one one um, participant earlier said something about using their, their experience level two progressors um, to mentor or buddy up with their less experienced new school leavers. So it could be something about um, preparing for a placement for their peer um, if 
someone's been on placement and somebody else hasn't you know what what um advice would they give somebody who was starting placement jan is anything you want to add to any of that or have i talked about that enough i think i think you've given a really good overview there helen nothing nothing to add from me thanks right wonderful thank you um so what i'd like you to do is if you can in the chat box or on your um, participant handbook or somehow do you have one main takeaway um, we're nearly out of time and I want to thank everybody for their input and work in the session we have covered a lot during the hour and it's just flown by and I was really not long enough to actually do much planning but hopefully you've had the opportunity to consider some of the factors and strategies that you might not have had the chance to do so yet but also share your experience with others so can I ask everybody for one takeaway, something new or even something consolidated as part of the session? Please put your ideas in the chat box and, and as I say, I'll make sure that they're shared. While we're thinking about that in true teaching style, I'd like you to set yourself at least one action to complete after the session. You'll find a place to record both your takeaways and your action plan on page 10 of the participant handbook. True CPD has a lasting impact on practice. The sessions we deliver and the support we offer in the curriculum team is designed to promote and advance learning. So please don't see this hour long activity as being the end of your professional development. Use it as much as you can to reflect on your already good practice and identify any further development needs. I'm going to leave you with your action plan. Totally trust you to do what works for you. So if there are any outstanding questions, we'll collate them from the chat box. Um, and, and as I say, they'll be circulated in um, a post-session activity. Thank you, Lorraine. Uh, further CPD sessions will include areas you can see on this next slide. But we're also keen to get ideas from our centres to inform the support we offer. Please review these and let us know about any other areas you'd like us to cover. And you'll, you'll find the link to the T-level event site on the bottom of your screen. Thank you, Janet, so much, as always, for your input and support today. Is there anything else you'd like to include before we finish? You're very welcome, and it's been absolutely wonderful to be able to, to have that interaction with, with the groups as well. So, so thanks for the opportunity for that. The, the, the only closing remark I would say is that, um, you know, you're the experts. You know what you're teaching. Sometimes it's a wobble when, when new things are introduced and, and we wouldn't be human if we didn't actually appreciate that. Um, we're with you and we'll give you as much support as we possibly can. And as Helen said at the beginning, no question is a daft question because we're, we're all working with something that is brand new. So please share any thoughts and, and any, any comments that you have, but and take the confidence in the fact that you know what you're doing, you know what you're teaching, you know what you're going to achieve at the end of the day. Um, and as much as you can and enjoy this new journey because you really will be pioneering for advanced technical vocational education for our students for the future and I thank you for that. Yes, totally, totally shadow that and, and again, once again, thank you all so much for your attendance and your input today. Um, please remind her, take a minute to complete the end of session evaluation when you log off it'll when you when you go to close the um presentation for today you'll it'll take you straight to the evaluation form so it'll only take a minute at the most and i, I do please beg you to, to to fill it in and give us your feedback so that we make sure that what we do in the future is correct thanks ever so much i'll catch up with you again no doubt um moving forward this is the first of the cpd sessions for the whole year so um Thank you for your input. Thank you for your questions. If you have any other feedback questions, please pop them into the chat box or pop them in. The, you've got an open text box in the evaluation as well. So um, please give us your feedback. Give us your input and ideas. Thank you so much for today um, and, and goodbye. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.